Okay, in the last video, we talked about design features that I really didn't like about the bike or I thought were design problems. In this video, let's talk about some of the design features that I really like. Um, just put that in context, that will be with regard to what the bike's used for. And it is basically a learner bike or a commuter bike or, you know, someone who wants a very lightweight bike. Um, it's the Lex, Lex Moto's entry-level bike, so, you know, a geared bike, so... Um, it's with regard to that, in keeping that in context. Okay, so what do I really like about the bike? Um, I love the link brakes on the E4 and E5 bikes. The link brakes are brilliant. I'm really, really fan. I'm a bit of a fan of link brakes. I think a bike that's lean, um, aimed at learners. Um, and I like the way the link brakes designed. It's incredibly simple. A very it'd be harder to think of a simpler system. Um, it's just naturally balanced by the size of its pistons, and it's very powerful. Stamping on both brakes is really brings this bike hauls it up no problem at all, even fully loaded. Um, I do like them link brakes. Um, it can be a little bit of a pain to bleed, but you know probably a lot easier than a lot of, of brake uh, link systems to bleed. Uh, I do like that. Um, what else okay so let's talk about some of the duplication in the system with the bike which um, in a commuter bike when you need that reliability having a bit of duplication is not a bad thing um starting with the engine okay so we've got electric start and kick start um and the bike's also the ignition is magneto driven so even when the battery is flat it'll start off the kick start we've never had to start it from the kick start it's always been reliable um even with the poor running um problem that we've talked about before um but the kickstart and it is a great kickstart it's not even a badly designed kickstart a really good design kickstart i've seen a lot worse it's a little bit low um where it engages where we're engaging about here but that's not i've had worse on bikes um and it's actually i'd rather have one that engages low that engages high um and it's a good length lever as well like the length of the lever for a 125 is massive but yeah i've had bikes um you know, three times the capacity as this, it didn't have a kickstart levers that long. It's brilliant, really good, well designed. Um, um, on the um, car bikes, you get a fuel gauge and a reserve tank. Um, why don't all bikes have reserve tanks? I just don't understand it. Even on the EFI bikes, they should have reserve. Um, fuel gauges, fuel gauges, but it's easy to miss it, or it goes wrong, or something like that it's just a reserve tank it's so simple it's an age-old idea and it just really works um if you know you've got 20 uh, miles reserve in your tank and you've got 20 miles it's so useful especially when you're commuting and um, you want to time them fuel um refills you know you might be late for work you know you've got 20 miles in the tank it just takes all of the guesswork out of it um i love it why on earth they got rid of the reserve tank when they went to air i have no idea um what else oh talking about the petrol tank the three gallon tank is brilliant it is huge a three gallon tank um is brilliant brilliant for commuting hardly ever needs to be filled with fuel um super economical bike now these bikes will do up to 125 to a gallon especially the fuel injector bike um and to have a three gallon tank is just fantastic it actually makes it better tourer than many tourers and this is probably my bike with the biggest range and all my bikes have got a good range and i have a bike with a 100 mile range and this has got a 300 mile range it's absolutely fantastic the only fly in the ointment of course is the fi bike you have to muck it up a bit and of course the vent tube comes up and it's very easy to if you brim full it it fills up the breather system and the bike stops but that just doesn't happen to the car bikes on the car bikes you can brim full them three gallons and uh, you've got 300 mile range you don't quite get 300 mile range in actual fact because by the time the bike's loaded up you don't get the fuel consumption suffers a bit and you're only getting about 90 miles to the gallon especially if you're riding at more highway speeds um, but on the subject of tour and they make an excellent tour um, we've done some good miles on this um, why is it a good tour okay um, the low power of the engine um, it's just not as peaky as it it's only 11 horsepower and it's got a fantastic spread it'll pull from almost any gear um, I keep seeing um, reviews bikes saying oh it's very peaky you've got a rev it well to go quickly you've got a rev it but you've got to do that with any 125 it's actually got a really good spread of power and it'll pull um, fifth gear from quite low revs right right down to a thousand rpm it's really really a nice torquey engine um, it's very user friendly so very mistake uh, forgiven 
you know, forgiven of mistakes. Um, on the engine as well, sorry to go back to the engine, balance shaft means that it's super comfortable for touring and there's hardly any vibration out of the engine. Um, you know, riding a 125 over long distance, I find the worst thing of it, it's not the low power, it's just the uncomfortableness of the engine, the buzziness of the engine, and the, and the sense of it just doesn't do that because it doesn't have them horrible vibes. And It's revving, but... Um, you know, there's, it hasn't got that horrible vibes because of the balance shaft. And you lose a little bit of power, but I think it's well worth having that balance shaft. I think it's a great idea. Um, okay, going back to touring again, you've got your rack, a built-in rack, which is really substantial, really strong, and very easy just to convert to a top box. You just put your Givy plate on. You can buy a Givy plate off eBay used for like 15 quid, a top box for 20 quid used, and you've got, you know, and a top quality luggage system for you know less than the price of a bloody tank of fuel for most bikes absolutely fantastic all one two five commuters should have a rack i don't understand why they don't have it and for me it's just an essential item really on a one two five you're going to be using this for college or even if you just want to carry um, some waterproofs and a lock around with you um it's just so handy and it makes the bike so practically you nip to the shops and just throw your shopping in the back Oh, brilliant the, the rack is just an excellent idea how they managed to do it on such a cheap bike to have a rack built in it's just just uh, just fantastic okay also in the price you get a center stand which is just um you know um i think is essential for storing the bike in high winds and stuff like that or you just want to do maintenance and chain maintenance again when you're touring not having a center stand is a real pain trying to adjust the chain when you haven't got a center stand and you're in the middle of nowhere Oh, that's just a nuisance, isn't it? So, um, centre stand. Okay, and the clocks. Um, really like the analog taco. Um, a lot of bikes don't have analog anymore. I like it. It's just that little bit of movement. It's a bit of fun, and you also just get the feel of it. You don't really have to read the numbers. You get the feel of where the needle's pointing after a bit, and it's actually faster than trying to read, you know, a, a light or. Or a, or a reading or whatever modern clocks have on them. Um, it also has a gear indicator, which is really useful for 125, as a learner, um, and a little fuel gauge, which is a bit inaccurate, but it's a fuel gauge. Also on the engine, you also get um, a dipstick and a side glass, and you get a centre stand. So um, doing that oil change is a doddle. Uh, it takes one litre of oil, you put one litre in and it's just exactly right. You've got the centre stand, um, brilliant. I think in the last video I uh, said I didn't like the 16 inch rear wheel because it limits tyre choice. One of the advantages of that 16 inch uh, rear wheel is it lowers the back of the bike and makes the bike nice and low and the, the seat's actually very well designed. Um, the shape of it means that if you're a bit short in leg then you have no problem reaching the floor and when you're cruising you can just sit back on it and it moves back to a comfier part of the seat and it is a huge seat and it is very very comfortable uh, the sponge in it is great quality it's not you know ridden bikes are much more expensive than this and the sponge is just nowhere near as good at ducati um so um a nice comfy seat um can't really see it in this but um has a huge battery uh nine amp hour battery on a 125 well i don't know if that's standard these days but 9 amp hour battery on a 125 is, is a good sized battery. Um, I'm used to um, the little 6 volt ones which were, were t 2 amp hours and this is 9 amp hour and of course you can now put an, a um, uh, an AGM battery in here and to give you even more power. Um, it's just a huge amount of battery power. You know if you're touring um, you can always uh, use this to pump up your airbed or do a bit of light and that battery is so powerful it has just lasts a long time it's a great idea especially for commuting another sort of oldie worldy old-fashioned sort of thing which i am a big fan of is it's got a little toolbox and um, so you can easily throw a few screwdrivers spanners some fuses um a bit of wire and um, whatever you need some cable ties and um, well we're throwing them in there and if you have a problem then you have a fighting chance you know if something comes loose you can tighten it back up you put an adjustable spanner in there. Most bikes these days don't have a, um, any sort of position to carry a few tools, or if they do, they're buried away under the seat. This is so easy to get at and so handy. Good toolbox.